Let's talk for a few minutes now about what it means when we say bacterial growth. We clearly don't mean one cell just growing into something larger. We mean cell division, so we really mean population growth. So we mean one cell becoming two and two becoming four on down the line. It's the same as when, when one million cells becomes two million cells. So it can be, um, we, we can conceive of this in a, a flask or on a petri dish in the laboratory or in an infection. Uh, take a look at the infection on the left there. That is what a cutaneous anthrax infection looks like. The spores had to have landed on this guy's skin, revegetated, and began to grow on the surface there in order to be able to infect it. So when we talk about bacterial growth, we're talking about bacterial population growth. And at the heart of population growth is binary fission. So let's look briefly at what goes on in binary fission. Right at the very beginning, we have to have DNA replication take place. We've got one chromosome inside the bacterial parent cell, and we really need to have two. If we're going to divide this into two, the first and most important thing is to make sure we've got a complete second uh, genome. Right, And so you see that what happens here in step number one, you've got replication taking place. And in step number two, the cell is beginning to elongate. You notice that the two chromosomes are actually hooked to the plasma membrane by proteins. And it works almost like a conveyor belt. As the cell extends outward, those proteins drag the two chromosomes towards the, the poles. Uh, once the chromosomes are clear of one another, then a septum can form. You see that at step number three. It's an invagination. You could imagine almost like a almost like a water balloon. And if you could loop a piece of string around that water balloon and then start drawing it in, that's what that septum formation is like. By step four, we see we've got a complete septum. And step five, daughter cell separation, is optional, right? Some species will always completely separate the daughter cells before they can undergo another round of binary fission. In other species, frequently, the two cells will remain connected to one another by way of the septum and immediately begin another round of division. So you can see here, uh, after step four, those two cells that have been formed actually begin DNA replication, elongation, chromosome separation without ever letting go of each other. And you see that what the result is in the first round is a chain of four cells, right? So this is how we end up with the various uh, natural arrangements that we see, like streptococci and streptobacilli, like staphylococci, like diplococci and diplobacilli. All of these different arrangements result from the cells not completely separating at their septa before undergoing the next round of cell division. Now, in some cases, like in the example they're showing here, uh, cell division can happen in as little as 30 minutes. Uh, lots of textbooks brag that E. coli can double every 20 minutes. I'll be honest, working with E. coli for the last 20 years, I usually can't get it to double faster than every 30 minutes. But in theory, at least, under perfect conditions, it should be able to double every 30 minutes or so. Realistically, the generation time or the time that's required for one cell to become two is typically a couple of hours for, for your average pathogen. So once bacteria get in, um, they're not doubling usually every 20 minutes. Now, there could be some very aggressive pathogens that are doubling that quickly, but in most cases, it's taken a little bit longer than that. So this idea of generation time or doubling time, the time for one cell to become two, if we go back to our previous picture, that's the time it takes to get from step one to step four, right? So maybe as fast as 20 or 30 minutes in the laboratory, but realistically in an infection, we're talking on the order of maybe single digit hours to undergo that. But the implication of that is, is pretty profound. Early on, it takes, let's say, an hour for one cell to become two. Later on, when there's maybe a million cells, it still only takes an hour for the, those million cells to double and become two million cells. So early on, it took an hour for us to get from one to two. We didn't add many cells to the population. Later on, we added a million cells to the population in only an hour. So, so th this idea of, of the growth rate essentially increasing over time, the, the, um, the uh, per 
Um, the absolute growth rate increasing over time, where early on we might be only adding one or two or four cells every hour, and later we're adding a million or two million or four million cells every hour. This is what we call exponential growth. And you notice during exponential growth, the doubling time remains the same. It still takes, let's say, one hour to go through a round of doubling. But because we have so many cells available that when they all undergo a doubling, we get a huge, huge increase in the overall cell uh, population size. So remember, when we talk about growth among bacteria, we're talking about population growth. And this idea of generation time or doubling time is an important one for you to understand. So in the final video, what we're going to do is take a look at what's called the growth curve. And the growth curve will allow us to consider um, what's happening to a population uh, early on when it's growing very slowly compared to later on when it's growing very rapidly compared to the end when uh, it starts to slow down again. So take the time to watch that video as well and bring any questions to me.